So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into some examples. That way we can get accustomed to this. So first off, which of the following defines a quadrilateral in which all sides and angles are congruent? So go ahead and pause the video, see if you can figure it out. But I'm going to go ahead and go over it right now. So let's think about it. Remember to always read the question first. Which of the following defines a quadrilateral? Okay, quadrilateral. How many sides are we dealing with? Four sides. In which all sides and angles are congruent. All right, equal sides and angles. Let's try to draw something like that. Equal sides, equal angles. So remember, equal angles in quadrilaterals is all 90 degrees. So we're here now, and all the sides are equal or congruent. Well, to me, that kind of looks like a square, and it is. Remember, a parallelogram, we would have all, we would have different angles in a parallelogram. A rhombus, all the sides are equal only. In a rectangle, all the angles are equal only. Square, this is the perfect definition. This is the specific definition. A square is honestly a parallelogram, because when you think about it, let's just draw a square. Because technically, because the angles are congruent, these would be parallel and these sides would be parallel as well and then we have the special cases where the opposite sides are congruent but this time all sides are congruent so essentially a square is a rectangle and a square is a parallelogram a square is just a unique version of it it's just a special case where all of the sides and angles are congruent so this question i doubt that a question this subjective would be asked but it's important to know the specific differences between these 2D quadrilaterals. Because once you have that, then you can go ahead and just pick them apart once you have problems like this. So moving right along here, example two, so identifying it by image. So identify the shown figure. I'll go ahead, take a quick second, pause the video, and then we'll go ahead and get to it. So we want to identify the shown figure here. Well, when we think about it, it's 3D, it's a 3D object, so no matter what, we need to make sure we look for 3D objects here. All of these are 3D, so we're good. They're all prisms or pyramids. So noticing our answer choices, well, it's either a prism or a pyramid. Let's figure out which one it is. Remember, prisms have two bases. Pyramids, think about what a pyramid looks like, just one base, and it meets at a tip. So this is definitely a pyramid. So A and B, gone. Now, we can go ahead and name this by its base. Remember, 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 3D objects, prisms, and pyramids are named by their base. So what does this base look like? Well, it's definitely four sides. It does not look like three sides. It's four sides. So there's no way that it'd be a triangular pyramid. It would have to be a rectangular pyramid. And this being shown in 3D, if we were to go ahead and just look at it from the bottom, we could see something like a maybe like a rectangle of this sort, something like that. If we looked at it directly from the bottom up. But there we go. And our last example here, we're gonna go ahead and identify by net. So identify the three-dimensional figure by its given net. So we have, let's see, <clears throat> we have three rectangles and two triangles. So I'll give you a second to think about that. Is it possible for this to be a pyramid? That's the question I want to ask first. Because the answer here is no. It's not possible for it to be a pyramid because if it had, if it were, if it were a triangular or rectangular pyramid, it would only have one base. And here I see more than one of every type of shape. I see three rectangles and two triangles. So this must be a prism. And then when we think about it, prisms have two bases. So what do we see two of here? We see two triangles. When we piece this back together, we'll go ahead and receive a triangular prism. Remember, we name it by the base. So that's all too important for us to know. And there we go. So hopefully this helped us out here. And I remember to go ahead and check the extra resources attached in the bootcamp. That way you can go ahead and continue practicing identifying 2D and 3D shapes. It'll take a little bit of practice, but I'm sure you guys can knock that right out of the park. So keep up the great work and let us know how we can help you out further.